So look what we have in front of us. This is the all new Brinkley 3250. This thing is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous toy hauler fifth wheel. We're gonna take a closer look at the interior of this, then we're gonna hop back out and take a look at the outside. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so before we kick this off, I wanna give a big shout out to the folks over at Funtown RV. We are at their Funtown RV party at the AT&T Stadium. They do this every single year, and it is a super, super cool event where they showcase tons and tons of inventory, about 150 units outside, about 130 units inside. So there's a lot of stuff here to look at. But again, we're gonna take a look at this new Brinkley Model G. And again, this is the 3250 toy hauler. So we have our Gen Y Executive Torsion Flex pin box up here. They are one of the few manufacturers that not only installs Gen Y pin boxes, but also warranties them for their units. So that's something you definitely wanna be aware of if you were looking at Brinkley. They fully back up their RVs and they've done some really great independent testing with this pin box to make sure that it is safe for use on their RVs. All right, taking a look at the numbers. This is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 22,000 pounds. It's gonna have a cargo capacity of 5,062 pounds and it's gonna have a dry weight of 16,878 pounds. It's gonna ride on three 7,000 pound axles. So you have 21,000 pounds worth of axle capacity, which is more than enough, simply because a lot of that weight's gonna to transfer to the back of the tow vehicle. Now for something like this, I would only recommend a dually. I would not put this behind a three quarter ton or a one ton single rear wheel truck. Personally, you want as much payload capacity and stability as possible, especially for a super tall full profile unit that is pretty dang wide and it is very long. But let's take a look at the rest of this thing, see what it's all about. So real quick, you can see a storage right here up front. You also have your Flex Power 5500i generator, your hydraulic systems. You can see some of your Sun Cycle Advanced Lithium batteries down here as well. It has a latch right here to hold this door open. You have your rich solar DC to DC power charger, which is really nice. You have a breaker right here. Plus you have a 3000 watt Pearson wave inverter. Very, very cool. Coming back this way. This does use hydraulic leveling. You have your propane can right here. It has a 30 pound can, but you could easily fit a 40 pound can in here if you wanted. Okay, opening up this big baggage door up front. This is kind of an interesting frame design, different than a lot of manufacturers. This is not a drop frame in the traditional sense. So this is a straight I-beam frame that runs through here, 12 inch I-beam frame, super, super, super heavy duty frame. I had an opportunity to see one of these at the uh, Lippert factory. And yeah, they put a lot of money and design and engineering into their frame to make it different than others. You have a lot of really cool perks, but one of those perks is what they do down here, which is different than any other manufacturer. So instead of dropping the frame down and giving you more space here, they actually build underneath the frame. So you have the strength of a solid I-beam frame with no drop frame section to it, but then they drop a portion down so you can have extra storage beneath it. So check that out. You have these Moride slide trays. Very, very cool. Over here, you're going to have a pass-through, which takes you all the way out. You have your outside shower right here. You have your slide out controls here as well, which is awesome because it gives you the capability of seeing your slides as they're coming out because if you're parked next to trees, anything like that, sometimes when you're controlling them from the inside, you don't really know how close you are to things. You can control all your lighting out here as well and you have your Rockford Fosgate sound. Back here, you have all your Rockford Fosgate equipment. You have 100 amp breakers right here two amplifiers, and this looks like the control unit for that right there. Very, very cool. You have your aluminum frame floor, very cool. And then you have more access back here, and this is actually access to that front storage section that you just saw. So if I can navigate this, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the door is currently up, but it gives you a ton of a ton of storage back here. Basically, the ability for you to put these up, magnetically attach them up here, and open up this entire space for storage, which really negates the need for a drop frame right here and the extra storage that that usually provides you. Down here, you have a really nice heavy-duty storage hatch with your Everchill refrigerator. That's 
very cool. Coming around, step inside of this 3250, then we'll come back out and we'll show you the rest of it. Okay, it's a little dark in this section because they don't have the power turned on yet, but we'll open up some windows so you can see what's going on. Check out how dark it is when you close these windows. That's one of the perks of these is the fact that they give you a lot of light blockage whenever you don't want a ton of light coming in. And then simply lift up. And these also lift up. And then you can open up the screen beneath it. Kind of like a super multifunction type window. Swinging around this way, let's do the same over here. Get some light inside here. All right, now we can see what's going on. So as we step in, check this out. It has a huge wraparound sectional style setup, and this all appears to be able to turn into a bed, I'm guessing. So they have a little diagram here to show you how this works. So you can put it in a travel position, you can put it in a bed position, a small U or a large U position, four different positions. It looks super comfortable, very, very soft material as well. On this side, you have a really cool dinette slash desk. Now you have the ability to really convert this into all sorts of different things. So this back piece right here stays where it's at, but then you see you can pull a desk out right here and you can turn it into like a big L-shaped desk. You can have it as a breakfast nook. You can put it in a dinette position so you can eat on each side of it. And then you can also put it in a center desk position because let's say you have two folks who are working. You have somebody maybe doing homework over here or working on this side. And then you also have work on that side and use the tabletop as kind of a desk extension in the middle. How cool is that? You can see how some of the graphics cut into the window, but it doesn't block much. It just provides a little bit more shade in that one corner. Coming around, I absolutely love how they, how they can cut everything so precisely that you don't need to have trim everywhere. That is really, really cool. As we come into the kitchen, check this out. So this is a really nice kitchen space. Now, part of me wants to believe there's some hidden gems here because there's usually always hidden gems in Brinkley units. First of all, you have this really, really nice, I believe this is going to be your magnetic knife area where you put your knives. And then this goes up like that. You got more stuff going on here. So this is where your silverware would live. Lots of cabinets and I love that they make the shelves adjustable. This is something that I've been screaming for in the industry and I love how they're doing it. All soft closing. Drawers extend really far, and they are also soft closing. Has a standard single basin sink with a straining rack. Nice upgraded kind of copper tone looking faucet. Nice little area there to put stuff. Storage underneath, again, all soft closing. You have a nice pots and pan drawer down here. Huge, and they've really given you a lot of access to this. So you have a ton of space in here if you, uh, if you have larger things that need to be stored in the kitchen. Plus more drawers right here. Now this is gonna be cool. So this is a cutting board. They switched to a plastic material for the cutting board, which is really nice. And it comes out if you need to clean it. So that is also a great perk. Basically be able to move it from here to the sink so you can wash it out. Underneath it, more spots for silverware, utensils, things like that. You have your traditional Brinkley paper towel storage area, which is really nice. Gets it out of the way when you're traveling or if you just don't want it there. Huge drawer right here. Again, more cabinets up top, more cabinets below. They're running the new four burner GE Profile stove, which is really nice. And this is an upgrade over the, the three burner Furion that they were using in earlier models. So that is nice. Nice solid surface quartz countertop. You have a GE convection microwave as well. So not only do you have the ability to bake and cook in your microwave, but they also give you this huge stove oven combination down here as well. Very nice. And I love the backsplash here, how they've done this with this long kind of shallow window that gives you a tremendous amount of light coming in. And they just put windows everywhere. I mean, they're really utilizing the space that's available to them for windows, which is awesome. Oftentimes in Brinkley's, there's a lot of hidden things. Like check that out. Spice cabinet, normal drawer. That looks like it's something special. 
Wow, that's a spot for some garbage cans for sure. Then you have some pull-out drawers right here. Very nice, again, all soft closing. This is very, very cool. Has a really nice quartz backsplash as well. So it's not just solid surface here, it's solid surface here. I think I actually see the price here as well, so maybe we can look at that. So this unit, which is again the G3250, has an MSRP of $195,594. And as much as a lot of people are going to say that that price is super high, well, you know the sale price is going to be significantly lower than that. And compared to other units, I feel that that's actually a pretty dang good price, to be honest. Okay, so before we go in the back here, what I want to inform you is that this is not a toy hauler. From the outside, it looks like a toy hauler, but it's not. There's some really interesting things going on there. Before we go there, let's take a look at this area right here. Check that out. Tons and tons of storage. This is your pantry storage. So you don't have to open a pantry door, you slide your pantry out and it gives you a tremendous amount of visibility into what's going on in your pantry. That is absolutely amazing. I love the adjustable shelves. That comes in really handy. You have your GE Profile refrigerator right here as well. They put a black one in to kind of match everything else that's black in this unit. Then you have more cabinet storage above. All right, stepping into the back. This is, again, not a toy hauler. So when we come back here, check out what's going on. This is super, super cool. Now, you could put some toys back here. You could put a couple mountain bikes back here. You could put some kids' toys back here. This is almost exactly what I talk about when I say not everyone needs a huge garage. There are tons of toy haulers on the market, and they've done a really good job by making this one a relatively small space. You can still fit a good number of things back here, but it gives you so much more usable room up there, which is something most toy haulers are lacking. They don't have the greatest floor plans for the living room and kitchen. And they've kind of nailed it back here. First of all, they give you a sink back here, which is really nice. You have another refrigerator back here. It's equipped very similar to the front kitchen, except much smaller and doesn't have, you know, a large refrigerator and a large stove, microwave, all that. We have a spot for your trash can here. You have more drawers here. You have more storage right there. This could make for a really, really good workspace. You have cabinets up top. Plus, everything is adjustable, which is really nice. You have your loft up here. So that's a great spot for storage or if somebody really wants to sleep up there. Of course, this will drop down and you can put your patio out just like you can in a toy hauler, except it's a much, much smaller toy hauler space. I feel like I talked to them about this floor plan when I first reviewed Brinkley units at this same show. And I interviewed the owners and I said, you guys have to have a smaller toy hauler design that gives you room for things like mountain bikes, kids toys, but doesn't use the whole garage and cut into the living space. So I feel as if I had some influence in this thing coming to market. We have a big brother coming out with a 16 uh, mid-year in okay. July. So, you know, if you are a side-by-side four-seater Razor customer, we'll be able to get you a unit too. So. I, I got to tell you, as much as I, I I'm going to say, I, honestly, I haven't been huge fans of toy haulers because every manufacturer makes toy haulers and they make them pretty much in the same sizes, same size garage. They make a, an 8, a 10, a 12, or a 10, 12, 13, 15 foot garage. What I am looking for, and my fans and my, my viewers have said it time and time again, is an 8 foot garage that you can throw your mountain bikes in, your kids' toys in. You can throw all sorts of stuff in that may not be a Polaris or may not be a side by side. It's just. You know, it's it's just designed to hold your mountain bikes and your things like that. And yeah. use this space right here for living room kitchen space. That gives you the ability to expand, have that L-shaped seating area, a lot of extra room. But just something to throw out. Man. I kind of make the same suggestion to the other manufacturers because if you want a toy hauler with a large garage, there's 101 brands out there you can get it from. Yeah. Yes, yours is nicer, better amenities. It's beautiful inside, I'll admit it but we're missing that hybrid in between toy hauler that gives you from here back so you can put eight mountain bikes in here and all your kids little power wheels and their mm -hmm. little bikes without having to take up the whole interior with that stuff that it's interesting sense. you know i've been building toy haulers for a lot of years and you know our 10 foot garage sales kind of died completely mm -hmm. and i would envision that kind of being the buyer but you know um if the customers want it all they got to do is yeah. tell us. Well, the problem so. with the 10-foot model 
is that the 10 foot model still never really gave you a true residential feeling kitchen living room it was still toy hauler feeling kitchen living room you just lost footage in your in the back and then when they try to squeeze a sofa a love seat and another sofa they try to do opposing things going on in there they're so crushed up against the tv you're sitting literally right up against the wall almost yeah. and that's the miss that we have is the rear living room floor plan is still the most popular fifth wheel floor plan but nobody's coupled a true rear living room style floor plan with a garage that gives you enough room to bring all the toys that you want that may not be gas powered toys mm -hmm. just something to think about no i love it thanks for the feedback I know I sound a little cocky if I say that, but if that's true, I would love for them to tell me that, hey, I inspired that conversation. And really, if I inspired, it was inspired off of the comments that you all, my subscribers, left on videos of toy haulers. So you have your big, large screen TV here. It looks like a 65 inch TV. It could be a little smaller, but I think it's 65. You have your panoramic fireplace there, nicely trimmed off. More storage above. Let's head up the stairs. Again, we're going to try to open windows as we go through here. This is technically pre-show, so that's the reason why I'm in here and nothing is opened up yet. All right, so in here, you have your one-piece shower stall, which looks absolutely gorgeous. You got sprayer head galore. You got one up here, one right here, one right here, plus you have the wand. You have a nice mirror here, and it insets into the wall, so it doesn't take up that much room on the outside of the wall because it sets back into the wall about two inches. Nice solid surface countertop. Undermount sink. Now, I believe the sink is plastic, but it still looks really nice. Of course, you have a porcelain foot flush toilet here, spot for your toilet paper. Again, another pull out pantry for your bathroom for towels, toiletries, everything else you might need, and adjustable shelves. I love it. Plus, you have this really large space at the bottom. And more storage here for a trash can. This is a really, really cool setup. All right, let's step into the bedroom. So first, let's open this up to get some light in here. Check this out. Real quickly for the ACs, it has three 15,000 BTU GE air conditioners, I believe. All right, so you have nice bamboo mattress, memory foam mattress underneath it. You're probably gonna have a lot of storage. You have a fair amount of storage because you have drawers right here. So you don't have all of the dump storage that you have here, but you do have drawers to be able to put clothes and whatever you need to put in there, which is nice. Up here, you have a couple shelves to put some things. You could probably balance a CPAP up there, but I don't know how confident I'd feel about just, you know, setting it up there all the time. You have some shelves way up high right here. I do wish it had nightstands coming off of this space right here because I don't think anybody really wants to reach way up there to put their phone or their coffee or their magazine or whatever they have in their hand. Some end tables, even if they flip down or they flip up, would be really nice at the ends here. All right, so a lot of extra storage. Looks like you have a collapsible laundry basket. Oh wow, this is Brinkley, that is cool. All soft closing still. You have your two bar stools that go out there, plus a lot of space in here. And this is prepped for washer and dryer, which is nice, which means you probably could put stackable units in here, but I don't see power in here for them. So this is probably designed more for a combo unit. More storage over here and storage below. Okay. You have your front closet right here. Good amount of space. I like how you have access to these shelves right here as well with the sliding door open. I don't think it bleeds into this space. It doesn't. So this is some storage you have on this side. Very nice overall. What do you guys think? This is one heck of a cool unit. They've done a lot of really great things. I apologize for not having any light on in here, but I think you all kind of get the point. This is a really, really cool unit. So you have a spot here for maybe dog water bowls, or if you want to put your shoes that are dirty, you tuck them underneath the stairs so they're out of the way. Very cool. And you have your touch panel here, which is currently turned off. Anyways, let's head outside and see what the outside of this unit is all about. Okay, since we already looked at this stuff, we're gonna move on. We have these cool Moride steps here. These are really nice because instead of folding the steps up into your RV and knocking all the dirt off, you simply fold these up like this knock all your dirt off outside before you bring that dirt into the RV. 
You have a really, really nice rack and pinion slide out system here. Let's take a look at the suspension. So this is gonna ride on the Dexter Easy Flex suspension. Has the Cooper Work Series tires, 12 inch I-beam, beautiful looking wheels. These things look so cool rolling down the road. Okay, coming around to the back. You have your second Moride step, same as the front one. You have awnings galore. So check this out, you have this like micro awning here. You have an awning coming off of the slide out. And then you have another large awning right here. You have these squared off windows, which also look really nice. Nice frameless squared off windows. I believe these are dual pane as well. You have the new safety rail for more right here as well on the front and the back. This is the large ramp. Then you have your Gerard awning up top with camera. Man, that AC goes right to the back of this unit. Nice LED light strips going up the side as well. Two inch receiver with chain loops. This is rated to tow. I believe it's 3,000 pound tow capacity, 300 pound hitch weight capacity, even though I never recommend towing behind a fifth wheel. Let's see what's in here. This is gonna be your fuel center. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Your fuel station's right here, but then you also have an onboard air compressor right here. That is really cool. 135 PSI max. Great to have onboard air if you need to fill up the tires on your RV or your truck or maybe some mountain bikes, things that you bring with you. This is a cool, compact, really compact toy hauler design, and that just gives a ton of capability if you bring your toys with you. Rack and pinion slide out over here. Going around this way. All right, so let's look at all the other cool gems they put here. So you have your 50 amp cord reel. You have a spot for your ladder to get onto the back. This is that new on the go ladder. You have some removable steps that get you on and off of the ramp in the back as well. And again, this all resides below the actual I-beam frame. Nice thick baggage doors. This is on a strut because you have a slide out right above it. And this is gonna open up down here as well. And you have another slide out drawer on this side. Tons and tons of storage underneath the frame, which is really cool. And here you have the rest of your storage. This opens up as well, like that one, and it exposes all of this area for storage. Auto leveling controls, your Nautilus water panel right here, and you have electric gate valves, which is super awesome. You have your on-demand water heating system plus your furnace over here as well. And then your second 30-pound propane tank is gonna live here, but again, you can also fit 40-pound tanks in here if you want. This is super cool. What do you guys think of this unit? If you are a fan of what Brinkley's been doing, some of the things that differentiate them from other manufacturers, this is probably the pinnacle of all that. They've done a lot of great things, including include the Furion side view and rear view camera on this unit as well. But please leave a comment below. I would love to know what your thoughts are on this unit. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.